Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to go over a couple of emails I got here from uh, a guy in Florida, we'll call him Jim and uh, he's got some good questions so instead of just emailing them back and forth I thought I'd do a short video on it and maybe it'll help some of you other guys. He starts out by saying, first I'd like to say thank you for the fantastic detailed video on the rebuild on the snapper drive. It gave me the courage to move forward with my rebuild project. That's why we're all here. That's why we do this on YouTube is to help people out. I've used YouTube to fix my blazer and other parts. Um, but this is what we like little response and feedback from you guys out there watching these videos. Uh, first thing he says is um, he bought this snapper. He said it looks new. He says uh, he said there's a little paint mist on the boots. So it looks like they might have touched something up to make it look a little better. I don't know. Um, he says there's one thing he noticed when he took the uh, differential apart. Let me tip you down here. Said when he when he tore his differential apart, uh, this is what he found. <clears throat> this is the inside. It's the uh, large gear. You got your four planetary gears, but the way they when they worked on it and they put it back together, they put this bolt through the gear like it's supposed to be. This bolt they missed the gear. It's just floating in here. And he said, um, I'm not sure if it was running when he bought it, but he said at one point this gear moved around and got jammed in there. And apparently it stopped this part of the drive, which is the, the large gear that the uh, drives the axles. And when that happened, this gear is driven off the engine from your hex tube turns that and what happened to that at that point was this is another picture he sent me that's what it did to that gear it totally destroyed it and when it took this gear out all they call that is an 11 tooth gear there's no name for it this big one is a 60 three tooth gear that's what they call that one but it looks like they had replaced that gear because this one looks pretty good but when it took out the small gear it ruined the edges or the corners of this one so he's going to replace both of these along with some other work uh, this is a picture of this short axle now this one don't look bad. I could probably reuse this. The teeth are in pretty good shape. They are worn a little bit. There's not much of a flat left on the edge. But he said this looked like an old problem. It, it snapped one tooth off. Uh, why it did that and why he thought it was an old problem. Maybe that tooth wasn't in there when he tore it apart which would leave you to believe that was an issue. Uh, another question he has while well, it's on here is he's wondered if I ever uh, ran across a problem like that with the gear not being where it's supposed to be. I, I know I never had that problem. Um, he was curious on the chain case the uh, hub that the hex tube goes through and uh, this, that's what the chain case slides on when you shift. He said he's got about an eighth of an inch play, side play, this way in this, this hub. I have none in this. Um, there's absolutely no side play. So inside of here is some plastic thrust washers and I'm pretty sure uh, we'll call him Jim uh, I'm pretty sure Jim you probably have to replace those if you don't 
What's going to happen, pull this apart quick. What will happen is if you get enough slop in that chain case with that hub moving back and forth, there's a chance that your chain will start to cut in to your case. That's what happened to this one. The play got so intense in there that uh, it ate through and it, it just about came completely through. I mean, it raised the surface on the outside. That got so close Uh, another question he asked me is I made the comment when I put mine back together I was going to use 8090 gear lube and he was wondering if that seems to be too thin well your snapper 4 aught gear lube I can't remember how thick that was uh, it appears to be pretty thick when you tear these things apart but then it's old, you know, it always gets thicker from age, I guess, or probably from all the metallic pieces floating in it that's wearing off everything. But 8090 gear lube, they use that in all the cars. It's in the rear ends of your older cars. It's in the uh, manual transmissions. It's in the front differential for four-wheel drives. It's in your transfer cases. I don't see why it wouldn't work in here. Besides, it's like five bucks a quart. And that snapper lube is, 20 years ago, I paid almost $15 a quart for it. Uh, let me spin you over here and I'll show you where you can buy these parts. Okay, these are all the breakdowns that I downloaded off of uh, the website from Parts Tree. Dot com. This is where I buy my parts. Uh, I went to my uh, local dealer that I've always bought my parts from, and he said, uh, we're, we're done with Snapper. We're not going to sell any Snappers. We're not going to sell any parts for Snappers. We're not going to work on any Snappers. I don't know what his problem was with Snapper. If they, I don't know. But he says, I'll give you the name of the company that I buy my parts from, he said, if I order them, I'm going to pay what you're going to pay, but I'm going to raise it 10% to charge you. So the name of the company is PartsTree.com. I'll put the uh, name of the company in the description below. You go on their website. Uh, the home page will bring up a phone number. I just called them. I downloaded all of these breakdowns first. You've got one for the rear case and all the pieces and descriptions, well, if I can flip the page, and all the prices, all the part numbers, everything's in there. I've got one for the front fork. I've got one for the right fender and differential, the left fender and chain case, uh, the ignition system, all the wiring, the mower deck and all the parts, uh, the bagger and all the parts. Here's the front and rear tires and all the parts. Uh, here's the clutch assembly. And if you really want to get into it, <laughs> here's a snow plow blade you can get for your snapper and you can plow your driveway in the winter. Although I don't recommend that, but you know. And get back to the slop that he's got in his chain case. I don't know if we can zoom in on this, if you can see it. But here is the hexed bushing that he's talking about. And right here, number 14, is your two plastic thrust washers. They call them nylon thrust washers. They're a buck 65 a piece. This company ships everything uh, post through the post office through them little boxes that you can go down and get for free. You can put as much weight in one box as you can get in it, and it ships for one price. They charge uh, 
five seven ninety five for shipping it doesn't matter if you buy one little thrust washer or you buy all the stuff I bought I paid seven ninety five for shipping now the uh, axle problem what it took me so long to get my parts is they had they were out of axles they called Murray Murray didn't want to make them apparently the last time I called him he's I called him on a Friday night he says I'll call him and I'll give you a message on your machine Monday well I heard that before <clears throat> but I got home from work Monday night and here's a message from him I think his name was Tom um, he said I called Murray and they won't give me a date he says I don't know what the problem is with him he said what I did is I called our competitor the same place I called but the parts were more expensive and I bought an axle the long one and the short one as soon as I get it I will mail it to you so okay now I'm thinking you know these this place is I can't remember where they're located at they're out by Texas somewhere so I'm thinking okay there's four more days to get it here through the post office but um, Wednesday at work it was delivered FedEx next day air so they shipped them to me and uh, I was kind of happy about that I didn't have to wait quite so long now let's go back over here now another question he has is it says here that the seal on the side of the fender has also failed and what he's talking about is uh, I showed you how to soak that holdy holder I guess it is in warm water and you can pop the seal out and put the new one in and uh, I think he said that was even missing but you need to have that on there uh, on the differential side where the axle comes through that would be in here like this where this axle comes through the side of your fender the fender bolts on here nothing holds all this grease in this axle turns inside that brass bushing and all this grease can just run right out that's why they put that seal on there it's an actual lip seal <clears throat> that keeps all the grease inside of here the bushing on the other side of the tractor you have to grease that when you tip your tractor up you'll see a little grease fitting on there that's how that uh, bushing is lubricated so every once in a while I'll shoot some grease into that thing that'll also help the dirt from working its way in if you're constantly pushing grease out of that hole uh, on mine I made up another seal and put on it another lip seal so I shouldn't have any problem with dirt getting in either one of mine but I hope I answered all his questions I will email him tonight and tell him that I tried to answer some of them online if you have any questions you need any help this is why we're here uh, send me a, an email it's jimsfixitshop at gmail.com I've been getting a lot of response from different people so far the majority of them are is out of Florida I don't know maybe I'm just sending a signal down there and not spreading out I have no idea but um, send me an email ask me a question if I can help you I will and uh, if you need anything otherwise work safe have fun and we'll see you soon.